Hey everyone, I am back with the results from yesterday's uh, food coloring and plastic or vinyl placemat um, dyeing experiment. So the only thing I did once the video had stopped was I went back and added a few more sheets of each of the type of different papers that I used just so we could kind of see um, a difference in the variation in color and the way it took the color going up as it stacked on top. Um, you kind of have to be patient with it. Uh, I did crank the heat up to about 275 degrees. Um, and after about 20, 30 minutes, I took the pan out carefully, took the weights off of it, and then took the first couple sheets off, put the weights back on and put it back in. And I kept repeating that until I got through the whole stack um, because it tends to dry or, you know, cure the top layers first and then um, kind of on the bottom as well. So I went in and added a few more of the um, music sheets. So I have four in total, five in total. No, yeah, five in total of the music sheets. So this came out really cool. I am absolutely loving that. Now you'll see that most of them, the fronts will be really uh, show that stencil really well, the stencil effect, and the backs are a little bit more modeled looking, but there's nothing wrong with that. Totally usable and ephemera. Again, more modeled, a little bit more detail around here. Definitely this is, uh, we got the real cool effect from that one uh, placemat on here. More modeled on the back. More the effect around here. Now this one hit around the edges more so, but it's kind of pretty cool and I like it. This side has got the modeled effect. And one more. So this side took it really well. Now this sheet is over a hundred years old. Um, and you can tell the way it's, you know, kind of ripped and I don't know. I, I just know because of the way, the way the paper feels. It's very different feeling than the other ones. So that one turned out pretty neat. And we still got a little bit of imaging on the back. So that one's not too bad as far as being just blurry on the back. Now, Let's check out the cartouche sheets. These turned out pretty neat. And I don't know if it's because they were smaller, so they made more of a contact with everything. You know, it's all kind of guessing how things really played out in the water. Um, and in the heat, in the pan, that turned out really cool. I like that little bit of a shadow effect from that placemat. And here is this one. Now this one was kind of, uh, I just wanted to try and see what this would look like just to show you. Took a little bit of um, glimmer mist spray and hit it before I ironed it. I did iron all these sheets too. It kind of uh, defines the stencil marks on here. And you know, of course it makes the paper lay flatter, but just a tiny bit of sheen on there. I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but a little bit. And then on the back, you've got more around the edges. So that came out pretty cool. I'm really not disappointed with anything in here, truthfully. Um, and if you leave me comments um, down below, I will add some of these sheets in with a giveaway if you are at all interested in that. So just let me know below if if you would like any of these added into it. So, and by the way, stick around to the end because I'm going to show you another thing that will be going into the giveaway. So that turned out phenomenal. Now this is that 32 pound copy paper. Um, this is Hammer Mill uh, 32 pound. And I, I think it just, well, number one, it prints really well for digitals, but it also took, it took the food coloring really well and the transference of the uh, placemats onto the back and front. Here's another, this is one of the echo dyed sheets I did and I wanted to kind of revamp it a little bit and I love the way that turned out. 
And the back turned out gorgeous. Absolutely love the back of that. So that's with that big leaf placemat. This one just kind of turned out like an echo die, but I'm okay with that. It's still pretty. Nothing wrong with that. And that one turned out kind of plain, except right around the edges is where I had folded that thin um, lace doily placemat all around. And that's what that picked up. But again, still usable. All of these are usable. This is the piece where the um, placemat had been cut and I had the little squares. So you can see it definitively here. Not so much here, which I don't know why that is, but this is another one of the echo dyed sheets that are revamped. You can see it took that really, really well. Now I'm wondering if the ones that I had previously echo dyed and then re dyed, if they accept it well because they've already been dyed on once. I don't know, but the results were pretty, pretty impressive with it. And I think those turned out really neat. And there's one, it's real faded, but again, it's with that leaf placemat on there. And that's one of the echo dies as well that I had done before. See there, we got the little, that one ripped. And I don't know if that was my cat when I had them laying out to dry, could be, but pretty neat, kind of faded on the back. And you know, if something rips like this, don't throw it away. You can still rip these apart or cut these apart and use them for collaging on ephemera, like tags or journaling cards, something like that. Here is one of the pieces of parchment paper that we put in, and it really didn't take well on the one side, but this side, it's not real, real strong of an imprint, but I like it because it's kind of faded, so you can see the parchment clear on this side, but then you can see the the stenciling effect from the placemat on the other. And here's a piece that obviously was very close to the bottom of the pan or the sides. So it hit that metal and it really, it cooked it. <laughs> it literally cooked some paper, but still cool. Again, that parchment paper, you can see it really took the dye at the edges and that looks really neat. Um, and it did the same thing on this side, but a little bit stronger. Very cool effect. This one, I can only think that maybe some pieces of the hibiscus kind of settled in between, and I can tell it did in some spots, but in order to get this color like this, it's like way different. I think there's only one other sheet that's got like that shock of pink to it, and I, it's like I did separate batches for these and I really, really didn't. So this was one of the previous dyed echo pieces as well. And I had redone it and that came out really cool. Absolutely love that. So here's the shocking pink. <laughs> this is also to, um, I think this is like 40 pound weight cardstock. So this is a lot thicker or paper, a lot thicker. Why, if that's why it absorbed, I don't really know. It might have been more towards the bottom of the pan. That's what I'm thinking happened. You can see where I folded in the lace doily uh, placemat around there. It picked that up beautifully. Absolutely love that. And then here is the watercolor paper. Now, this really didn't do much at all. It only picked it up in spots. You can see this was near the bottom of the pan because this is the imprint from the bottom of the pan. And all we got was a little bit of hint of lace, that doily one, right around the edges. And then on this side, it was a different placemat, the one with the um, freeform leaves. And we kind of got that faded on here. So I thought these would make cool um, cut up into journaling cards or tags have as a background or a base. And then this is the last piece of cardstock or cardstock watercolor paper. So 
where that swirl came from. I'm thinking that might have been that big silicone um, trivet that I put in there. I don't really know. So it's like a magical mystery that happens when it hits the oven. Okay, so that is the results. I hope you enjoyed that. It was fun. I, I encourage you to play with it and see what you come up with. Um, I'm looking forward to doing more this spring. I'm going to be planting some flowers, particularly uh, black petunias, because black petunias actually, when you echo dye with them, they leave a gorgeous purpley blue color. And I actually pulled out two I did last year, and this is on watercolor paper, so they're kind of faint, but they're still really, really cool. So this is with the black petunias and then some of regular leaves in here. And then it's just regular on the back. Same thing here on the back, but this side, so you can see the petunia clearly on here. Just beautiful, I love that. So I can't wait to play with those again. And as promised, here is one more thing that's gonna be added to the giveaway. And it's a pack of Stamperia paper. Um, this is Old Lace, uh, 10 double face sheets, acid free. So if you like vintage or shabby chic, that kind of thing, um, this is the pack for you. There's a lot of cut aparts in this, I do know that. Um, but gorgeous papers from Italy and they are going into the giveaway. So stay tuned for the next video. I have no idea what I'm going to do. I'm thinking of maybe transforming some 12 by 12 sheets that maybe we want to use the whole thing, but obviously you can't use an entire 12 by 12 sheet in a journal or can we? I guess we'll see. So thanks everyone for watching. Take care, be safe, stay healthy, and I will talk to you all soon. Bye.